All right, we are live, and I'm going to um, nice. give it 30 seconds for 15, and then just to make sure that we're starting right at the top for the camera, um, for the editing and that sort of thing. All right, everybody, if you're joining us, this is the State of Geo Webcache. We'll start in just a few seconds here. All right. Hello, everybody. This is the uh, afternoon sessions here at Phosphor G 2021 in the Cordoba room. I'm Eddie Pickle. I am the moderator for this afternoon. And we're fortunate to start off today with uh, the state of GeoWebCache. We're lucky to have Andrea Eim and Kevin Smith, uh, longtime colleagues of mine. Great to see you guys from widely disparate um, time zones there. Um, I'll uh, uh, many of you know Andrea. He's the Saul Katz Award winner from 2017. He's a longtime open source developer with GeoTools and GeoServer. Um, Kevin has been a GeoServer and GeoWebCache developer for years and is a steering com committee member living in Victoria, British Columbia. Hopefully, we'll all be seeing Andrea next year live in Florence, Italy, but I'm going to turn the floor over to Andrea to talk about the state of GeoWebCache. Thank you. Can, can you also share my slides? I don't see them yet. Thank. All right. So this is the state of Geo Cash presentation, and uh, I'll give uh, the floor to Kevin for the introduction section of the presentation. Okay. So uh, you can see uh, this is state of Geo Web Cash, uh, and uh, yeah, this was also prepared uh, in by uh, the two of us plus uh, Simone. Uh, so Andrea and Simone are from Geo Solutions. I'm from Vivid. Uh, okay, here's some quick quick introduction to Geo Solutions. Uh, we have offices in Italy and uh, in the US, uh, and we support uh, several products, including GeoServer, Geo, uh, Geo Node, Map Store, uh, Geo Network, and also Geo Web Cache, of course, with a number of uh, uh, support and uh, development options. And uh, we are uh, matching to open standards uh, for OGC and uh, GeoEnt. Yeah, back and to Kevin. Vivid is a uh, contractor in uh, Victoria. It's sort of somewhat similar, but yeah, less of a specific product thing. So, what is GeoWebCache? It is a tile server which can operate as a cache if you need it to, but it can also serve up just pre generated tiles. Java-based, it can operate standalone or as part of Geo, uh, or Geo Server, and it supports a whole slew of different tile protocols, but most notably WMTS, TMS, and WMSC. It can get its uh, data from a WMS when it's operating as a cache, and will then store it into an abstract blob store. It can also read MB tiles packages or the ArcGIS compact cache format. And you can plug in whatever other tile sources you want by writing a Java plugin. The storage for caches is called a blob store in GeoWeb cache speak. And there are a wide variety of different options. The primary format is on the file system as discrete images. And you can uh, adjust the file layout if you want to expose the files directly instead of uh, serving through GeoWeb Cache, in which case it's basically operating as a tool to generate a static tile format, or you could serve out of its cache. You can also serve, uh, store in the cloud in S3, Azure, or Swift. And you can also use SQLite databases. And this is also pluggable. So if you want something else, you can write a plugin to make it do that. The standalone, uh, as a, when it's operating as a standalone uh, server, you can configure it via XML files on the file system, or you can configure it via REST, in which case you can manage the layers, manage your blob stores, 
or you can run seed and truncate jobs to fill up the cache. It can also operate as a module within GeoServer. Uh, this gives you the convenience that it is able to see the GeoCache catalog, a GeoServer catalog, and auto configure itself to cache all of the layers. And this means that you can have it set up so that it'll automatically cache every single layer in GeoServer, or you can just turn it on yourself with a click of a basically this button up here. And it's also able to exploit the fact that it's inside GeoServer to allow for faster seeding. So it's able to talk to the GeoServer renderer directly instead of going through HTTP, which reduces overhead. And I'll hand it over to Andrea to talk about what's changed in recent versions. Right. So in terms of tiled layers, uh, we recently added support for MB tiles layer. So if you have an MB tiles uh, database, which is uh, you know a, a little SQLite database with a table structure defined by an open spec, and uh, when you get uh, uh, links to the slides, you also also get a link to the to the specification there. Um, it basically each MB tile, each SQLite file contains one pyramid of tiles which can be images like PNGs or JPEGs and maybe a mix of both, but also vector tiles. Um, at the moment, uh, it can be configured only as XML. We don't have a GeoServer UI integration to, to configure it right away. And uh, on the right here in the picture, we have the, the basic version of the, the tables, which are, well, pretty simple. We, you have our tiles, a table that contains all the tiles, X, Y, Z, and uh, the, the tile value, uh, the tile blob, and metadata, which contains a bunch of descriptive attributes, including uh, if it's uh, vector tiles, definition of all the layers inside the vector tiles, and the attributes and whatnot. So uh, tile JSON uh, metadata. In terms of blob stores, uh, uh, last year, um, We've been working on uh, making the, the file blob store com more configurable. So if you look at a GWAP cache uh, uh, generated on file system cache, uh, you will find out that the file system layout seems a bit strange in that it doesn't follow the usual Z, Y, and X order uh, for directories, but uh, it uses, uh, well, blocks of, uh, of directories. Uh, in, in an effort to, to minimize the number of files per directory, which can cause significant troubles when you start having millions of files in a single directory, especially on certain info systems. However, uh, right now you can also configure X, Y, Z uh, layouts, either the TMS with the Y axis pointing from the bottom up or the sleepy map layout, which has the Y axis pointing to, from, from the top go, down, going down to the bottom. And uh, when you generate the cache, it's going to generate the usual uh, Z, Y, X uh, order. And uh, it means that if you can, uh, uh, if you want, you can precede the entire cache and then stick it on a, a static file server and uh, uh, use GWAP cache just as a tool to quickly generate all the tiles. So we uh, suggest to use the X, Y, Z uh, layout for uh, static seeding and uh, the GeoRussi native for dynamic caches instead for the caches where you know uh, you are partially generating maybe some of the tiles but most of them are going to generate it uh, going to be generated on the fly on a uh, as needed basis when the clients request for them. We also added an Azure blob store which is well a close relative to the S3 one it's just using a um, a different set of libraries to access Azure rather than S3, supports authentication, ATP, HTTPS, and proxies, and stores the tiles as Z, uh, X, Y again, so uh, TMS order, which means uh, you can either store the tiles in Azure and do dynamic tiling or perform a, a static caching uh, on, uh, on Azure and then serve directly from the Azure blob stores if you want. 
In addition, we have a new entry, which is the Swift Blob Store. Uh, Swift is uh, part of OpenStack, and it's, uh, it's uh, the Blob Store for OpenStack. Again, it supports authentication region and Keystone. It doesn't have uh, a GeoServer integration yet, but it can com be configured as XML, uh, which also works in, in, in GeoServer because the, the GeoServer interface basically uh, is, is a helper to, to set up uh, a set of XML files. So if you go and edit them directly, you can get a Swift blob store going. Uh, there are other blob stores that have a, a, a bunch of, um, of uh, news, let's say. Uh, the, uh, the S3 blob store uh, added support for Cohesity. So the thing is, S3 is a, such a common uh, API that other providers started supporting the same web calls as an S3 uh, store. It's just that uh, there are minor differences. So we adapted the, the S3 blob store so that it works also with Minio and Cohesity using their uh, S3 compatibility layer. Uh, the SQLite blob store is also interesting. I think it deserves more attention. It's not MB tiles. It actually uses uh, uh, multiple SQLite files uh, for a subset of the tiles, uh, which uh, helps with the scalability, because when you are doing a seeding job or just uh, doing uh, dynamic generation of tiles, uh, it's going to hit the different uh, SQLite files. And this is good because uh, when you're hitting uh, a single SQLite file, only one thread at a time can, can access it uh, write-wise. So uh, this helps. Uh, populating the cache is much faster. And then once you have your bunch of SQLite files, you can do stuff like saying, uh, well, okay, now that I have it, I can move it to another server. So maybe you have your uh, tile production farm on the side. And once it's ready, you push it to the production server. In terms of tile services, uh, we added the tile Jenkinson integration in WMTS. In particular, when you are using WMTS RESTful, um, one of the resources that uh, is exposed right now for a layer is a tile JSON document. And the tile JSON can be used uh, as the source of tiles in a number of mapbox oriented tools. Uh, and if the tiles are vector tiles, or if the tiles are coming from an MB tiles filled with vector tiles, we are going to expose the tile JSON inside the MB tile so that uh, the clients know which layers there are and which attributes there are. In addition, we are uh, working on OGC API tiles. Uh, this works only when GeoCache in, is integrated inside your server. It has been done like that because we already have all the infrastructure to do OGC APIs in, in your server. And uh, the uh, protocol level developed in, uh, in GeoServer actually talks to the GeoCache machinery under covers. At the moment, the spec is still in draft and evolving, so it's uh, more like a, an experiment. You can use it right away, but uh, be warned that the, the, the specification uh, is uh, um, ever-changing, at, at, at least for the moment, uh, until it reaches a, a final version. Let's have a look at the other improvements. Um, we recently added uh, built-in support for the OGC two-dimensional tile matrix set specification. This specification provides um, a, a well a set of well-known grid sets, such as Web Mercator Quad for uh, the Web Mercator, Word CRS84 uh, Quad for the uh, EPSG uh, 4226 grids, and uh, one quote for each and every UTM zone, so lots of grids. Um, what's interesting in, uh, about them? Well, uh, you start with a um, rich catalog of uh, grid sets that you don't have to configure. Uh, they are standardized, and uh, uh, the um, tile, uh, tile set uh, le uh, level name is a pure number, which helps when integrating with Mapbox or XYZ clients, which do expect the Z to be a pure number. This is a departure from WMTS, where the, the name of the, the grid set can actually be any string. 
and typically in the in, in our grid set it was something like EAPSG column 900,913 column 5 so the, the Z was at the end um, we also changed the generation of the WMTS capabilities because it used to just dump all the known grid sets uh, sorry, the, the, all the known time matrix sets, but now that there are so many, uh, we are doing on-the-fly filtering and just uh, dumping the ones that are actually used by at least one layer. And uh, yeah, this is a, uh, a screenshot showing uh, one of the uh, grid sets. Another thing that uh, that has been added recently, well, last year, let's say, uh, is improved seeding. The, the seeding subsystem always had uh, system variables that you could set to, to make it more robust for uh, the seeds, like uh, uh, retrying failed tiles and allowing a certain number of errors before aborting the seed, but they were not exposed in the, in the UI and in the REST API. Uh, we made it more uh, uh, evident, easier to reach, and now you have these parameters that you can set so that uh, uh, during a seed you have a bit more robustness. Without them, what you see is that you start with, I don't know, 16 threads doing the seed, and then one of them hits a an error, seeding a tile, and it dies. And then you are down to 15 threads. And before you know it, you are down to just one thread, or the the seed job ends before uh, completing all the seed. With these robustness uh, parameters specified, you can tell uh, the, the engine how many failures it has to tolerate before giving up. Also, we added a better integration with WMS-T. Um, in, uh, in WMS, in GeoServer, uh, nowadays you can specify uh, an ears match map on uh, the dimensions. So you can have the client to specify a time, and the server responds not with that time, but uh, with the closest one available. The problem is that the geocache caches the, the time that has been requested, generating too many, uh, too many um, caches. Also, uh, and this is a problem that we always had, uh, WMS dimensions, they have default values, such as the biggest value you have, and uh, think about ingest, you know, continuously ingesting new images, your default time keeps on moving forward. But uh, uh, the cache for the uh, default value is always the same. So you start getting uh, tiles for all their versions of the imagery. Again, uh, not great. Uh, now it's possible to disable caching uh, on uh, default values, nearest matches, and fail nearest matches so that, uh, well, you you don't end, end up uh, uh, populating too many caches uh, in the process. Also, uh, we have been working quite a bit on quality assurance, and I have a presentation about it uh, later uh, today. Uh, we added uh, automated formatting with the Google Java uh, formatter and static code analysis with PND, error prone, check style, and spot bugs, and uh, made sure that uh, if any uh, violations uh, is reported by these tools, the build fails. Uh, of course, that meant that we also spent time uh, making the, the existing geocache code pass all uh, the, the checks from all these tools, which took quite, quite some time. Uh, also, um, there is a number of installations that have uh, a large number of tile layers, and uh, there were a few scalability bottlenecks at startup and at runtime, uh, which uh, were uh, fixed either by me or by Gabriel Roldan, uh, so that uh, yeah, the tile caching gets faster, especially when integrated with your server, and especially when having you know t thousands or tens of thousands of tile the layers. And now back to Kevin. All right. So now I'm sure that uh, after hearing how wonderful GeoWeb Cache is, you're all rearing to go and download it, put it into production, and start contributing back to the community. So to get started, you know, you can get uh, the release packages of bars from SourceForge, the GeoWeb Cache project. You can get the source code from GitHub at the GeoWeb Cache project. 
and our documentation is available online at the GeoWebCache website at the link shown. You can talk to us at the uh, user's mailing list. This is where you can get and give help using, on using GeoWebCache and report bugs. And if you want to contribute code to GeoWebCache, then you should join the GeoWebCache developers mailing list. This is where we plan future development. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. You can get help with uh, development problems. And please, before you start work on something, post to that mailing list to get some help so that you can make sure that you're not sort of doing something that someone else is already working on, that your approach fits the GWeb cache, and that you're not going to run into problems like that your style is incompatible and we're going to ask you to reformat everything or that you'll have to you know, run into problems with those uh, static checks that Andrea mentioned a couple of slides ago. And of course, there are other ways to contribute. So development, of course, everyone wants to be the ones uh, adding new features, but bug fixes are also important. And the thing that everyone tends to forget, boring maintenance. No one wants to do it, but if you do do it, we will remember that you were the one who actually got that done. Also important is testing the release candidate. This is in your own interest to make sure that the things that you are using keep working. So when a release candidate comes up, take it, run it through you know, a test with your particular configuration to verify that the upcoming version still does what you want it to do. Of course, documentation is always appreciated. You can always use improvements, updates, and maybe if you're, you speak a language other than English, which is basically all we have at the moment, a translation would be cool as well. And simply participating on the mailing lists is always a big contribution. You can help discuss changes and help push it in the direction that you want. And we always appreciate uh, help for other users in the either the users list or solving development problems in the devel list. So, any questions? Yeah, we have we have uh, four questions. Let me see. There's the first one there. Um, in an HA configuration, what's the best way to use GeoWeb Cache with S3 as a blob store, and how much complexity is involved in not using the integrated GeoWeb Cache? Well, using the S3 blob store in a HA configuration is like trivial. You just have all the nodes uh, pointing at the same blob store, and uh, S3 is handling for you all the concurrency uh, issues. So it's like transparent. When it comes to the complexity of not using the integrated geo cache, uh, you basically have to replicate all the configurations twice. So you first configure the layer in um, in uh, geo server, and then you have to configure again the the layer in geo cache. Maybe using the REST API. In that case, if you can, it would be advisable to use the REST API to do both and just automate it. Okay, we only got a couple more minutes and we got the, a couple more questions. One is, is it possible to force using GeoWeb Cache without tiled equals true queries? It used, it used to be impossible, but uh, right now there is a parameter in the uh, GWC panel that allows it. Excellent. Um, you could also just use a, one of the GeoWeb Cache specific services instead of the WMS endpoint in GeoServer. Okay, uh, another question. Yeah, let's head to support. Eddie, files. you're gone. You're, you're coming and going. Oh, sorry. I, I have to stay in to continue to talk. You're right. Um, so here's the question. Can you just G dial, et cetera, support MB tiles with custom projections, but it's hard coded in an MB tiles to server store plugin. Is this due to technical reasons or because of the MB tiles standard? Because we implemented the MB tiles standard as is, uh, which uh, only supports a web mercator. Uh, 
but uh, I think that we, if we figure out how they do, uh, if QJ, uh, how QJS and, and GDAL extended the standard to, uh, to support other projections, we could use that as well. It's just a matter of uh, resourcing and funding it there. I don't see any technical problem. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, sorry. Next question here. Yeah, are there particular techniques to get GeoWebCache to work well with GeoServer where the layers are parameterized, i.e. layers are pulled back based on SQL query? Uh, well, uh, you'd be using a parameter filter in GeoWebCache in that case. Uh, if you really need to, you could define your own parameter filter. Uh, that's doing some Java development that you'd have to plug in. You can also, if you can, uh, there's a reg regular expression-based parameter filter, so you can filter which, you know, what values are allowed in a particular field that's being cached using a regular expression. So if you can make a, one a regex that uh, can validate your values, that then that should work in a situation like that. Okay. But yeah, if you want something really specific, you're going to have to you know, develop your own little plugin. We've got a few more questions, but we're out of time. I'll forward those to you, Kevin and Andrea, or you can see them in Venulus, and, mm -hmm. and we'll find a way to circulate those to the audience. I really want to thank Kevin and Andrea for a fantastic presentation on GeoWebCache. We'll be back right at the bottom of the hour, four minutes from now, for our next uh, session. So thanks, everybody, and good luck uh, getting to your next session. Thanks, Andrea. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.